Hello, welcome to the ISACA CISA CERT exam preparation. This is uh, this domain is actually named as domain zero. That's because this is just an introduction to the exam itself and why um, a professional would actually uh, try to to take the exam and pass the exam. Why someone would try to become a ISACA uh, CISA certified professional. Okay, so um, uh, in our agenda, we're going to talk about why taking the, the exam, why is it important, what make what difference is it going to make in your life as a professional, um, as an auditor or a cybersecurity information security professional, um, IT manager, and um, obviously this links to who it is for. So who should actually try to uh, pass this exam? Uh, obviously, we'll associate that, associate that with its benefits. And finally, we'll discuss the exam itself. So we'll do a exam overview. Okay. So um, the, the, the first question that we need to answer is, why should I become an ISACA CISA professional, certified professional. Well, if we look at the sentence, the statement made by the International Systems Audit and Control Association, ISACA itself, what they say is that the Certified Information Systems Auditor, CISA, okay, is a world-renowned as the standard of achievement for auditing, monitoring, and assessing IT and business systems. Okay. Also acknowledge it also acknowledges the importance of emerging technologies. Achieving a CISA certification showcases your expertise and asserts your ability to apply a risk-based approach to audit engagements. Addressing innovations like AI and blockchain, CISA ensures that IT audit professionals stay current on the latest technology trends and advancements. ISACA credentials are among the top 10 highest paying in IT and CISA is recognized as the preferred credential for IT auditors. Okay, so uh, a few things that you need to observe here. First of all, ISACA, that is the International Systems Audit and Control Association. And uh, this association is an association that was uh, put together, that was created um, in order to um, take care of how to or define how systems should be audited, okay? How corporations should be audited as far as its governance in regards to its IT infrastructure, to its IT systems. So observe that the first thing that you need to observe here, and probably the most important thing that you need to understand, is that the CISA certification is not a certification, well, actually, none of the ISACA certifications are uh, specifically for cybersecurity professionals. Well, if you are a cybersecurity or information security professional, you can and you should take the, the exam. It, it is only beneficial if you become uh, a CISA certified professional, for example. But uh, what I'm, I'm saying here is that the exam itself is not focused on uh, testing, verifying if you are a cybersecurity professional. This is a certification for auditors. Okay, so the goal here is to make sure that you are, uh, as an auditor, okay, whether you are an IT manager, IT auditor, cybersecurity auditor, senior auditor, I mean, whatever the, the title might be, um, the goal here is to verify if you do understand, if you do have the skill set and the knowledge required uh, by a uh, by an auditor, an IT auditor. So as an IT auditor, um, you should know of s uh, some stuff, a few things here that are critical. 
okay so again the goal here is not to test is not to verify for example if you understand uh, of what a firewall is or how to deploy a firewall that is not the goal okay although understanding security feature security resources is important because how can you perform auditing how can you manage assets how can you uh, for example um, perform a business impact analysis of your digital assets if you don't do not have a knowledge about those assets themselves okay so um, again as far as why becoming a ISACA CISA professional, obviously you can negotiate higher salaries. Um, you have a globally recognized certification. You are a globally recognized certified professional. You prove that you have expertise in a niche market. Um, so this is a very specific industry or a very specific area. Obviously you can share your digital badge if you do pass the the exam um, so you can share that badge on any professional uh, uh, social media such as LinkedIn for example right the average annual salary and this is in the United States okay so in the United States the average annual salary of a CISA certified professional is one hundred and ten thousand dollars per year and it can go up uh, it can be as high as two hundred thousand dollars per year. Uh, observe that the one ten thousand per year here that's an average. So you have you may have some size of professionals uh, making let's say eighty five ninety thousand dollars a year, and you may also again you may also see some people that are making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay okay now who is it for well it's a specifically it's a exam that is specifically for uh, information technology information systems auditors uh, control assurance and information security professionals okay again uh, the exam is not trying to verify if you are an information security professional it is as far as information security professionals the goal here is well if you are that kind of professional you should be able how to conduct auditing you should be able how to to audit systems uh, and audit the entire infrastructure uh, belonging to a specific organization okay um, if you become a CISA professional these are just a few examples of roles jobs that you may get right so you may become a digital risk control expert a cybersecurity engineer cybersecurity analyst IT auditor IT manager IT risk specialist information security risk management and uh, uh, I'm sorry information security risk manager and so many others that are out there again if it is a role that is associated with a, a information technology professional in a higher level right uh, that means that you most likely need to understand and need to know how to conduct audits so if that's the case this is a a great exam a great certification for you okay now um, it is common to see nowadays uh, a number of certification exams requiring some uh, industry experience okay that is not uncommon especially for the let's say higher level um, of certifications and when I say higher level I'm referring to certifications that uh, that are focused th that are uh, that should be taken by uh, managers IT managers uh, directors uh, analysts engineers okay so as far as the size exam there is an experience requirement so you need five years or more of experience in information security uh, I'm sorry information systems information technology audit control assurance or security so what that means is you do not need to be an information security uh, an information systems auditor or IT auditor if you are a cybersecurity or information security professional 
and you do have five years of experience as a cybersecurity professional, that's the experience that you need. Now, there are some uh, waivers, some experience waivers, but they are available for a maximum of three years. What that means is, out of those five years of experience that you need, let's say that you are um, you can apply for those waivers. You can waive at most three years, which means that you still need um, two years uh, in industry, two, two years of experience in industry. So, for example, if you are uh, if you have an associate's degree in information security, computer science, uh, computer engineering, and those uh, that the, the those degrees in that in the, these areas, right? So you get a one year waiver. Okay, if you have a bachelor's degree, then you get a two year waiver. If you have a master's degree, you get a three year waiver. Now, you cannot combine those years, uh, well, you can combine those waivers, but you cannot surpass three years, okay? And what I mean by that is, let's say that you have an associate's degree, you have a bachelor's degree, and you have a master's degree in computer science, for example. Well, you're not going to waive all those five years. You waive at most three years, okay? Now, as far as the exam itself, uh, so the exam has a time limit of four hours, okay? And uh, you will want to take all the time, use all the time that you have available. This is a, an extensive exam. You have 150 multiple choice questions and the questions are not that simple. I would say that compared to most professional, applicable and technical exams, Okay, uh, the size exam is more difficult and more exhausting because the, the questions here are more high level. Again, this is an exam for managers. Okay, um, the score can range between 200 and 800 points and you need a minimum of 450 points to pass the exam. Now, as far as the, 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 the content of the exam itself, um, the exam is organized into domains, okay? This is just another trend that you that we see, uh, we've been seeing lately as far as certification exams. They are organizing the, the exams into domains or breaking down, breaking them, them down into domains, okay? And for the size exam, you have four domains, uh, I'm sorry, five domains. Okay, domain one, two, three, four, and five. And as you can see here, you have domain one, which addresses information system auditing processes, domain two, governance and management of IT, information systems acquisition, development, and implementation is domain three, and domain five addresses information systems operations and business resilience, whereas the last domain, domain five, addresses protection of information assets okay now obviously just by looking at the the domain names you might be a little bit confused or you may have questions in regards to okay what do they what do these domains specifically address okay what do we need to specifically study well and that's exactly what we are going to see in our training course the first thing that you need to observe in regards to our training course is that it will follow the exam outline according to how it's been outlined by ISACA, okay? And what I mean by that is the each module, okay, that we're going to have in our training course will follow their specifically their specific outline what that means is whatever the first topic is and we are going to talk about that uh, in a few seconds whatever the first topic is that is going to be our first module the second topic under domain one that's going to be our second uh, module so forth so on the goal here is to provide you with these modules aligned with 
the the outline how the exam has been outlined by isaca so that when you for example let's say that there is a topic uh under the the in the, the outline uh, that you are not sure if you have the full understanding or you you want to revisit it and that is uh topic let's say 3.3 okay well that means that you need to look for our module 3.3 so you don't have to because uh it's very common to see uh some uh, some study sources or study resources that they will basically define uh, uh the the topics or the modules according to what the author or the content creator defines as as the best logic okay um now here we want to follow the the outline to make it easier for you so that you can find whatever you're looking for okay now let's take a look at the the uh, subtopics that we have or the topics that we have under each domain okay so here as you can see uh, this is the IS, isaca uh, website where they address the CISA exam and the first domain here observe that it corresponds to 18 percent okay and um, I will actually go back and show you uh, a few differences between the previous uh, version of this exam of this certification and the new version that is being released in August of 2024 okay now this training course focuses on the new version the one that is being released on august 2024 so in this version domain one corresponds to 18 percent of the questions that you have okay and again domain one addresses information systems and auditing processes uh, so providing industry standard audit services to assist organizations in protecting and controlling information systems domain one affirms your credibility to offer conclusions on the state of an organization's is uh, it security risk and control solutions okay now it's organized into two different subtopics okay you have 1a so domain 1a or topic 1a that's planning and 1b that's execution so in 1a you're going to see is audit standards guidelines and codes of ethics business processes types of controls risk-based audit planning uh, types of audit audits and assessment in 1b you have audit project management sampling methodology audit evidence collection techniques data analytics reporting and communication techniques quality assurance and improvement of the audit process okay just to summarize what you can observe here is that the first domain is directly tackling directly addressing system auditing okay you are going to see that the other domains they are not directly addressing auditing they are addressing other topics that are required that you must know you must understand to properly conduct an audit so if we move forward and take a look at domain two which also corresponds to 18 percent of exam you're going to see that this domain addresses governance and management of information technology right so you can see that domain 2a addresses it governance so gov it governance and it strategy it related frameworks it standards policies and procedures so uh, uh, maturity maturity models uh risk management you can see laws and regulations you can see that these are topics associated with it governance not associated with uh auditing okay to be you have it management so you can observe you can see that's uh, that that this certification is actually um for uh managers it managers again engineers analysts uh auditors it managers okay um in domain three that corresponds to 12 percent of the exam uh 
the topic here is information systems acquisition, development, and implementation. So 3A addresses information systems acquisition and development, such as project governance and management, business case and feasibility analysis, system development methodologies, control identification and design, where 3B addresses information systems implementation. Okay, so when you are to implement a system, uh, well, you need some testing methodologies. What are the most important testing met methodologies that you must know? It also addresses configuration and release management, uh, system migration, and post-implementation review. Um, in domain four, that corresponds to 26% of the exam. So you can see that uh, a bulk of your exam is in domains four and five, as you can see here. Again, domain four, 26%, that, is, that addresses information systems operations and business resilience, right? So uh, 4A, information systems operations, um, so common technology components, IT asset management, job schedule, scheduling, system interface, and user computing, data governance. Again, these are all topics or technologies or concepts that you must understand in order to properly audit a system. In 4B, again, also concepts associated with business and governance, IT business and IT governance, right? Business impact analysis, system resiliency, data backup, storage and restoration, business continuity plan, disaster recovery plans. And finally, in the last um, domain, domain five, also corresponds to 26% of your exam. The topic here is, the domain here is protection of information assets. And here you have, let's say, uh, topics that are more directly associated with information security. So just to confirm what I stated before, right? Um, this is not an exam it's exclusively uh, for information security professionals. Information security professionals should take this exam if they can. But the goal here is not to specifically address information security concepts, although there is one domain that addresses information security. Because again, how could you perform auditing? How could you uh, become an IT auditor if you do not have information security uh, concepts and, an, uh, and a uh, thorough understanding of information security uh, definitions and terms, okay? So 5A, information asset security and control, and 5B, security event management, also a very important topic. Okay, now, by the, uh, the, by the end of this course, you should be able to do anything that you can find here in the supporting tasks, okay? So this is another very nice resource that the ISACA um, organization uh, or association provided to us, which is, hey, this is what you must be able to do in order to take this exam. Now, obviously, you have about 30, well, almost 40 um, uh, tasks here, right? And we're not going to go over all of those. Um, we'll cover them as we progress throughout our training, okay? But it's very important that you do take a look at it before you take the exam. You want to make sure that you can do anything and everything that is described, described that is listed here, okay? Now, as far as this version of the exam, let's go back to our slides. So, um, in the previous version of the SIS exam, you can see here that the distribution of the, or the weight of those domains are changing now to this new version. Okay, so in the 2019 version, domain one corresponded to 20 21% of the questions. In the 2024 version, 18%. Uh, domain two, they it actually incre increased domain two. 
so it was 17% now it, now it's 18% well domain 3 remained the same although uh, uh, we're going to see some uh, topics uh, or changing topics um, domain 4 there is an increase from 23% to 26% and finally in domain 5 there was a reduction so it went from 27% to 26% okay um, what you can observe the, the the biggest difference here that you can observe is for domains one and domain four so in domain one it reduced from 21 percent 2019 version to 18 percent 2024 version okay basically they switched these uh weights here or they switched the questions uh under the domains uh, from domain one to domain four so what you can observe now is that domain four became a more important domain it, its importance increased okay so information systems operations and business resilience okay so how to conduct business impact analysis how to conduct uh how to uh, uh conduct business continuity plan or how to create a business continuity plan um, how to conduct disaster recovery planning these are t tasks that are now very very important okay so i hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial let's say okay or this overview about the exam and in our next video we are actually going to start our first topic under our very first domain thank you very much